Welcome everybody to Memoirs of Successful Women. Today I have such a treat for you because I have a most amazing guest, Dr. Adama Calico. She is a multi-award winning driving force of change for Sierra Leone, a country who just seriously needs powerhouse women like Dr. Adama. She's committed herself to promoting the United Nations Sustainability Development Goals within her organization and she is definitely doing her part to reduce poverty in her area. Dr. Adama is the founder of Impact Sierra Leone, an organization that's founded to reduce socioeconomic challenges in Sierra Leone through empowerment and education and building strong partnerships with uh, diaspora community. Uh, she also is using her passion for public health and by, by launching Seeds of Life Project, which helps over 250 primary school children to access fruits and vegetables and learn about wellness. She's also going to be an author in an upcoming book called A Woman's Guide to Business Domination, where she's collaborating with myself and beautiful women from around the world. That book is coming out in October this year. Oh my goodness, we're going to have so much to talk about and I'm super excited. As you can hear, welcome to my show, Dr. Adama. Oh, it is an absolute fantabulous pleasure um, <laughs> to be on this show. I was thinking about it all day. It was like one of my motivations to get through work um, because it's always an honor to just be a voice, mm -hmm. to network and to just connect with other people, other women who are mm -hmm. just doing their thing to just brighten the world up and just make our voices to be heard not just yeah. for ourselves, but to help the next person along the way. So I am thrilled, honored, and grateful to you, uh, Ms. Annie Gibbons, for leading the way. Memoirs of successful, we're, we're successful tribe because of each other. So thank you for pouring into me. And I am so excited to share a little bit about, you know, me and just, you know, my cause and my love for empowering um, oh, people around the world. What a joy. You just knock the nail on the head there when you're talking about, you know, collaboratively, you know, working together and to, to be able to share not only our voice, but so that other people can receive that message and then use their voice as well, right? Yes. It's all about just, you know, having women who are leading by example on the things that we're doing and the things that we're sharing about and then actually giving hope yes. and, um, and inspiration to other women going, you know what, you can do your part here. We're just yes. all a cog in the wheel. We're all just doing yes. our a bit. So I know that you are going to be so inspirational with what you share today. So I, yeah. I also know that your parents instilled a deep sense of pride and appreciation of their Sierra Leone heritage. What has that meant for you as a woman who I know you spent, you know, most of your life in the US? What does that actually mean for you to then sort of grow up in a family who says, hey, don't forget, you know, your heritage in Sierra Leone? Well, it means a lot. So much so, I believe that it's like a part of me now. Um, born and raised in Washington, D.C., to parents who migrated here in the 70s and all, had all five of us here in the States. So mm -hmm. we were, you know, raised in D.C., we were, went to the public schools. Um, so we were ingrained in the American culture, but it's almost like we have you know, we're, we're in two worlds. Uh, and so one thing that I, I sometimes I look back, you know, when I was younger, I didn't understand, you know, why do, why can't you just speak English all the time? Why do you always have to speak your language? Yeah. You know, why do we have to wear this African outfits? Why do you have to threat? You know, it was just the American in us versus the African in us. And yeah. so gratefully and fortunately, as I got older, it became more of a gift than a curse. And so that's why like, I use my, I guess when you see the light, you don't want to go back. You just want to continue to, you know, for me, embrace that culture, show the beauty of it. And I, I feel like I'm making up time because I know <laughs> I was one of those shy girls, didn't want to be, you know, seen, didn't want to speak, didn't feel like I had anything to say. You know, I had a little bit of an accent growing up and, you know, over time through different experiences, I just learned that this is a beautiful gift, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I, I do thank my mom. Uh, my dad has passed and that's another uh, reason of my love for Africa um, and what he, he put in us. But one thing that he would always remind us is that, you know, Africa is really your home. I didn't understand it growing up. 
And I'm mm. like, I don't know if you don't understand the process, but I was born here. And at some point I even tried to change my name just to be wow. cool. Uh, I was Dominique for a little bit. Um, <laughs> I was Maria for a little bit. I, I went through phases of just trying to as cool, be as cool as possible. But eventually yeah. your destiny and your purpose will meet you. It will find you and you will have to face that. This is where God is leading me to. So I get the privilege and the honor of using that story of how much I disliked my culture and disliked my my dark skin and just being different and just that whole being different. I, I now use it as a blessing. And I yeah. know that that's why I can't be silent because there's another, you know, I guess what you saw, first generation born that is in the same situation. And, and one thing I realized is that you either love your culture, if you're like me, you're born in America to people who are from another country, you either love your culture or you don't. It's mm. always that kind of like, I'm gonna, I want to be accepted versus, you know, and I think maturity sets in and exposure, you know, plays a part. But for me, that's why I don't shut up about <laughs> the beauty and, and, and the culture and just how much I, it is a part of me, you know, mm -hmm. and everything that I do. So I, I hope that other, as I say, descendants of the diaspora like me will say, you know what? And we have a power, you know, because we're here, uh, we have uh, doors that are open for us that may not be open for our, you know, families back home. So, yeah. you know, that whole mindset of, you know, I can give back because I do have more. You know, we're not, you know, filthy rich, but we do have more than than the average um, yeah. in, in some of our third world countries. So so I I feel it is all absolutely a blessing each day. And I feel like, OK, what's today? Like, what am I going to do today? And, and the one word that I always use is inspire. Mm -hmm. If I can't inspire um, with whoever you are, if I can't be an inspiration, uh, a light, uh, some someone who can at least leave some kind of a positive impact, uh, whether it be momentarily or a lifetime. You know, I feel like I haven't lived to the fullest. <laughs> and I think this two years that we've had has shown us that you have to, you know, life is short and yeah. you have to live life as if it's your last. And so I think that that's one of the joys. But I, I absolutely feel like it's a playground sometimes. Um, I do have a nine to five job, you know, that pays the bills. But when I get to do the work that we are doing in terms of inspiration, um, development, you know, working with the young girls, you know, I always say that my mom, you know, never traveled to the U.S., I would be an African girl. <laughs> So I always put myself in them and I always look at them in their eyes and say, you are a beautiful young lady. You are a beautiful creation. And it it gives me warmth when they look at me like, wow, <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's it's uh, what they put in me. I didn't realize it until I got older that it was priceless, <laughs> priceless. <laughs> So priceless, so yeah. priceless. Well, you're certainly uh, one beautiful woman. And uh, and I know what you've shared there is a struggle by so many, every sort of, you know, family that you're living in where you've had immigrants, you know, I, mm -hmm. I definitely noticed that. My mum came out to Australia from France, actually, when she was 12, and she had that same story of she wanted to lose her accent as soon as possible. She didn't yes. want to be the French girl, which now would be very popular with that. Wow, yes. <laughs> uh, you know, and it's all determined by society, right? And it's actually yes. for us to be change agents to say well that's how society might have thought that people who don't fit in have to assimilate whereas actually we know that the the people who are successful often have their own way of doing things it's the unique that brings out the beauty and the, the change value. Uh, the and the value, value. Yes. Uh, but that's so hard when you're a child in those you know in, and kids can be mm -hmm. harsh you know, kids can um, be make it really difficult for you. So that view of trying to just, yeah, that's right, hide. I love it. You do not look like a Monique. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Maria. Maria. No, Maria you definitely... and Dominique and there were some other names Dominique. down the road. But... Oh, my goodness. The Dharma suits you because it is who you are. And I think that's what we all share on this this type of podcast is that it's bringing out your authenticity and yes. actually going on that journey. And the journey isn't an overnight journey. You know, as as I know in, in your, your story, it's actually, you know, been as you've matured and evolved, realising the value um, of yes. of heritage and and also the appreciation or the gratitude 
food or yes. you know um, affluence that we have when we're living in a Western country that mm -hmm. you know countries particularly like Sierra Leone which would have to be one of the poorest countries in the world yes. you know you don't have to be rich in a Western standard to be able to add incredible value exactly. uh, you know and I've been looking on your website and it's almost like you can just give a few dollars just for umbrellas or school yes. books or resources like it's just so easy to be yes. a blessing yes. um, it doesn't cost thousands of dollars to actually um, be able to make a difference exactly, in exactly. So, exactly. Oh, what an absolute joy so I know you do have a day job and you've also been uh, you've been in the US Air Force you were honorably <laughs> serving there for four years you were definitely yeah. um, wanting to sort of then get some um, revelations of how, how you can actually add value sort of on the side what are you doing in your day job now and then how does that then allow you time to still be able to do the work that you're doing in your projects yeah so Adama just takes her sunshine with her and so uh, that's one of the things that I can I, I enjoy you know when you enjoy life you can't just stop it from you know place to place. Um, I, I actually work with the National Guard Bureau um, as a business analyst. And so we kind of, you know, uh, totally opposite from the, you know, serving humanity. Uh, but we do serve, you know, our military personnel and help them with their functions and just try to make sure that they are um, able to communicate uh, what they need to communicate in a, an efficient manner and we keep things in order. Um, so it's uh, a lot of, uh, you know, working with senior military personnel uh, and, you know, with that comes with that respect. And uh, I would say that it actually helps me keep my communication flow, mm. lots of networking, um, you know, being able to communicate with people at all levels is definitely a gift um, because it helps you um, loosen up because sometimes, you know, I know growing up, I thought, okay, I can only communicate with certain people because I'm comfortable. But sometimes yeah. you have to be uncomfortable to go to the next level. And so um, that's what I do um, during the day. So it actually is a lot of um, program management, uh, you know, technical and technical writing. And, you know, so it's good experience because it kind of interplays with, you know, what, how I try to keep organized with, you know, the writing and the different technical things that we have to do with Impex Sierra Leone. So yeah. they kind of, you know, they feed into each other. Exactly. But, and that's what it is. It's getting the right blend, right? And I think yes. a lot of people are listening in think, oh, you know, it's just such a, you, to make an impact, you actually have to do something full time or as your main gig. Well, well, often no, because one, you just don't have the resources. It's not a financial business plan at this mm -hmm. time or it's not right for where you are. I know you're raising a, still a very young family. Mm -hmm. And so it's not always the way. In fact, sometimes, and I've had that on my career journey, that it's actually easier to stay in the main job of where you are, that you can then be you know, well supported. And then it, then it requires that extra effort to actually mm -hmm. do this. We call it a side hustle in business, but definitely when you're doing something for purpose, it actually is just your opportunity for a passion project which is yes. more what I would describe yours uh, so it's honestly it's a salute to you to be able to be able to give your time and energy to yes. that but also to see how you can weave those opportunities often if you can get the balance right you can use those opportunities I know how you have to actually go you know what through through the um you know the the armed forces you, i know you worked as a volunteer through um, americorps corps and things like that nice. so you can suddenly go okay because i'm in an area i can now go and springboard off opportunities that will help my side purpose uh, yeah. which is to impact sierra, sierra leone i would say that was one of my best journeys um so i was fresh out of um the military and then i just finished up college. And it was then that, you know, as people were going to the different internships and, you know, paid jobs, you know, I was, I always knew that I was just from an early age, I was always the helper, you know, like whether it be church or I'm very family oriented. So, you know, you know, if there was something that maybe an event or something, they knew, okay, well, just tell a dom and she'll take care of it. And um, I did event planning. So I feel like I've had all these different you know, ingredients. And, and, and at some point, I thought that that was like my job, my focus, and then they kind of just come back. So they're yeah. coming back to the organization. But AmeriCorps, I feel like, you know, while I thought it was just, oh, man, you know, it wasn't, it was, it was 
a stipend <laughs> for transportation, but then they also help pay for, you know, some of my schooling. And but in this in a, in, a, in an overview, it was really a gift to me learning how to serve. Yeah. Because, you know, I did t- two rounds. Uh the first four uh, I'm sorry, it wasn't four years, it was it was two years, but then I was hired by the organization. Um, so I started out as a volunteer coordinator. So I coordinated all the, um, it was through a church. So I helped organize all the different members of the church for a third Saturday of the month volunteer exercise. And I was calling the shelters, calling the soup, soup kitchens, the schools and organizing volunteers to go and serve two hours on a third Saturday. And, you know, at first I thought, oh man, all my peers are just, you know, exceeding. And, but it really turned out to be a gift because it, it really allowed me again, uh, working with, you know, different levels of leadership um, yeah. and communicating, you know, uh, my, uh, I would say my mentor at the time, uh, she was leading the organization, it was called Hope Worldwide. Um, they really did spread hope and, through that, I was hired to be the volunteer director, and then I stayed on additional years. So it helped me learn how to gather people to serve with purpose and mm-hmm. to really see the people that you're serving and actually just see their faces as they're being impacted. And it was that's when the light went off. Like, I think mm-hmm. this is a part of my, you know, I was still trying to figure out my journey because, again, I had started event planning. Um, I started doing floral arrangements, <laughs> decorations. <laughs> um, I did I did several different. I was a, I guess I, I'm always been a creative, yeah. uh, creative bee. Uh, if you can see my floral arrangements, I'm still <laughs> making flowers. It's therapeutic. But you know, as 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 and a wedding coordinator, yes. So you know, so everyone knew I was you know into. But you know, being a young single mom, not single mom, I was married, but at, you know juggling uh, family. And then, you know, I just, you know, decided it wasn't a good fit. However, they were still in me. So I'm looking forward to teaching some of our women uh, and children back home, uh, some of the creative arts. (laughs) Um, So, but anyway, that, that experience with AmeriCorps, we did a lot of traveling to see other AmeriCorps fellows. Um, I really got to learn how to see people speak passionately Mm -hmm. about what they were doing. And I learned the value. I mean, I learned really what passion was, you know, passion really is believing in something so much. It it becomes a part of you. And it's like, you don't need a speech to talk about it because it's in the heart. And I would find myself. And one of the other things that happened is that um, I was, I got a Thurgood Marshall um, scholarship and it, led to like somewhat of a like a training class where they kind of we did a gallop so we learned about our strengths um we did all these different supplemental things that came along with that um and i really believe that that was probably one of the best experiences um and just being able to be comfortable in who you are um and but always looking to grow like professional yeah. growth became the key word. Like always be looking to every single day of your life, make sure there's an improvement. I don't care if it's rolling up the socks is in the corner. Don't go to bed without doing something that improves, makes your life better. So today, you know, yes, tomorrow will be better than yesterday. And so that's that mm-hmm. that kind of positive mindset. You know, as I said, mindset is everything. You know, when you start feeding yourself those different things, it becomes a part of your daily, you know, success. So that was, I believe, the seeds being planted in me and in how to just try to make things better, impact, use my voice and, you know, be positive. That whole energy came from that Thurgood Marshall, uh, AmeriCorps. Then I was a volunteer director at my school. So I believe that's where I think it was born. Yeah. yeah, and I love the way our journeys evolve. And and in essence, you know, it's you're using all of those little parts that even when you were wedding planning or event planning, that's actually all these sort of generic skills that you're picking up: the confidence, mm-hmm. the coordination, the networking, mm-hmm. the making mm-hmm. things happen. If you can run a soup, ki- soup kitchen or work in shelters and schools in the DC area, you can certainly yes. do that in a in a in a village somewhere else. Do you know what exactly. I mean? They're all they're all um, building blocks, if you like. Well, that true purpose is actually evolving mm-hmm. into it with clarity 
right? So then through those experiences and also, you know, we're often at those stages of life, you know, when you're having kids and, and you know, the whole world sort of, it's it's all spinning so fast and there's yes. sort of not, you feel like there's not as much time to sort of go, okay, well, what yes. about who do, I, who do I want to be and what sort of legacy will I leave yes. and, and all yes. those things that often come as you then sort of get older and grow more into yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and all of these have now led you to be able to be such a driving force. So tell me and the listeners a little bit about what you do with your projects now with Impact Sierra Leone and uh, and what it means to you to be, you know, I, I see your total sole purpose is to empower women to be change agents in this country and to believe in their worth and then also to be able to support the foundations through education and, and resources so that future generations will be able to rise. That's what I got from your website. So hopefully I've I felt that is that what, yes. what your purpose is? Yes, you captured it. Um, so I want to start the the one nucleus that led to my purpose. Actually, um, my father, um, James Iconte, who loved Africa, uh, he would always talk about it. He would always describe it. He would always, you know, just kind of put it a part of the conversation um, that, you know, there's no place like home. And, you know, it, it was something that ingrained in us. And my mom as well, you know, there were different moments. They would just say, wow, this reminds me of the trees uh, in my grandfather's garden. So we grew up with these, you know, very colorful stories about the roots and culture and growing up. And so that kind of, you know, stayed with me. And so in, two, in 2007, unfortunately, he passed away. And so that kind of, you know, stunned me like, whoa, uh, yeah. This wasn't supposed to happen. I'm only 18 years old and I need my dad, you know, and it took some while. It took a while. And I was my first year in the military. So I was literally, you know, just kind of like uh, confused. But yeah. over time and through different um, support systems, you know, I learned that I had to either, you know, take this in and, you know, process it, but I needed to find a way to still go forward and become that Adama that God destined mm -hmm. me to be. And so I turned that tragedy into a triumph. And myself, as well as all my siblings, we decided it was time to visit and go to Africa. And so yeah. in 2003, December, um, after um, a canceled trip and after a very last minute United Airlines one seat open. Uh, I was aboard a flight to Sierra Leone, West Africa, and I reached there December, uh, I believe it was December 14th or something, 2003. And that trip actually is where I believe this whole purpose of me wanting to serve people, it became evident that it was to do something in Sierra Leone. Now, I know that I'm focusing on Sierra Leone, but we will, you know, we look towards expanding and, you know, partnering so that we can impact um, communities here. Uh, we have done some projects here, but that whole first trip to December 2003, that was the nucleus. That was the beginning um, because I came back and I was a different person. Um, and um, I went to, I've never met any of my grandparents alive. So I purposely asked my family, please take me to all of their grave sites. Um, we prayed and um, I said, your granddaughter is here. And so I met family members who knew my dad. And so, you know, just going to school, going to my mom's school. So all those experiences mm. you know when i can say when i came back when i was i said i'm, I'm so full <laughs> of purpose i don't know what to do and you know it took some time i joined a lot of organizations that was doing things in sierra leone my sisters and i we were here we were here we were there we were <laughs> yeah. helping we were mm -hmm. like anything we just want to help sierra leone but we i don't feel like we were being used and a lot of people were like you need to start your own foundation and i'm like oh no i'm not getting into that <laughs> I'm not going to fail on that. You know, that's a big deal. You have to cross your T's and dot your I's. And, you know, that fear factor at, at some point, you know, and it's something that, you know, we've, we've learned in our, our um, global leadership is that once you, you face fear and you realize, you know, either I go over you or mm -hmm. you me. So who's going to be taken? And I decided, you know what, maybe I can get advice and talk to people who've done it and maybe... But I think it's the best decision I made. Um, mm -hmm. And so with my sister's help, um, 
we sat down and we did the paperwork. And, you know, when you have that determination, it's, it's frustrating at first because you have yeah. to pull this, you have to go here, you have to gather this. And, you know, but when you know that at the end of the day, you'll be able to do so much more. You know, for us, that was what Impact Sierra Leone um, meant. It meant that this was our honor to our dad. You know, he yeah. is going to be honored. He will, his name will not be in vain. Uh, my mom will be honored because we're giving back. Uh, and it's not just one area in Sierra Leone. You know, we started out with uh, another school. Um, we started out with the orphanage of young girls. And each experience, I believe, brought us uh, knowledge on how to work with people, um, being that you're here in the U.S., you know, it's a lot of communication, a lot of making sure that, you know, everything is being done accordingly um, so that you can stay function, you know, functional. Um, yeah. But I would say throughout through it all, it's it's been probably the thing that has kept me, um, even when we went through the pandemic, you know, what the work that we did, I feel like it was my survival um, mm -hmm. because as a event planner, what was I doing? We were planning, you know, empowerment parties. We were we were planning, you know, um, meetings, um, you know, you name it. Um, and so communication that I was learning from all those uh, entities, the military and Thurgood Marshall, they all came back. Uh, mentorship, I realized I love pouring into other women. You know, mm -hmm. just like with, with you doing, you know, just the honor to be able to pour into another person. Uh, a lot of people poured into me. So I felt like this Impact Sierra was my baby. And, you know, having it and doing it with my sisters, you know, for me, it's I feel like it's therapy mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, in a weird way. So, you know, our, our current projects, you know, we, we, we've kind of evolved and we actually have been focusing on one community um, mm -hmm. and it's in rural parts of Sierra Leone, um, which is like a remote area where not many people go. Mm -hmm. and so that was actually my dream was to work with a community that was not getting a lot of support or mm -hmm. not getting um, any assistance. And so um, through the you know connection with a relative, we were connected with this farming community. Um, their literacy rate is super high. Um, their the school is in very you know poor condition. But I I feel like when I went went there, they clapped, they sang, they embraced. You know when I was they were you know we didn't speak the same language, but I was introduced as you know Dr. Adam Makaloko who wants to help this village, and just them receiving me. And then we ate, we broke bread together, and they let me know you know we welcome you here. And mm. some of them were crying because no one had ever come to be bring assistance. And so I said, yeah. you know, for now we are here and we're going to do what we can. I can't promise you guys anything, but I will be your voice. Mm. Um, I will make sure that, you know, people know about you. We're going to tell your story because it's all about the story. Yes. You know, and letting people know that there's this young woman, Aminasa, who has two kids, but she loves to braid hair. And you pour into her and you'll be surprised what she can give back. And so that was where the the whole feeling about when you empower the minds, the people who you may think who have nothing to offer, you will wake them up, something in them. Mm -hmm. And so um, this past um, December, we had our first holiday party there. Uh, we celebrated. Over 400 people came. Um, we, we, you know, we didn't have much, but we said, okay, let everyone eat. Um, and we gave each child a school supplies. We had a pinata. We just wanted them. We had bubbles. We just wanted them to enjoy the moment and feel um, worthy. Mm -hmm. And that whole United States, we're all, we all have a value. And mm -hmm. from there, you know, they said, we welcome Impact Sierra Leone. So we actually immediately started a farming group. So we have four farm sites there. So, you know, we kind of went from working with orphans and now we're doing agriculture to help them. And so we started a farm with the kids. So it's, I feel like every day it's, it's a beautiful journey. Um, mm -hmm. Even when you have the twists and turns and some of the challenges that come in between, I, I really do feel like I'm I get to play, you know, <laughs> whenever I, I tell the story. And, you know, it's it's a language, you know, even though it's a language girl sometimes, they they accept some of my messed up Creole and <laughs> Timmy language, you know, and you know, but I have a good team on the ground, which is a blessing, you know, teamwork makes the green work. So yeah. I stand strong because I have some trustworthy people on the ground that try to help make sure that they can be the connector because I cannot do it all the way from the U.S. successfully without a tribe, like a tribe, you know? Yes, exactly. And, 
and and the chiefs and I told them if you guys work with us we would do our best to bring honor to this village and now they say you know people used to look down in the village now everyone is looking to their village and is saying wow look at Foindu and it just makes me honored that at least I can do something like that mm -hmm. and that's what I feel like is a transformation when I can leave that community and go to another community and they're able to do the same work and and mm -hmm. do it well with honor and respect so i and i and they they take pride in me because i am not born there mm -hmm. um they heard the story of my father and my mom and for them every time when they hear they clap mm -hmm. because they said it's not normal for american kids to come to africa uh, mm -hmm. and you know do that it's not an everyday thing so mm -hmm. i always feel like Yes, I'm I, I I'm honored just as much as you guys are honored. It is, mm -hmm. it is it is a complete honor. So every time sometimes I get on, I feel like, okay, what song am I gonna sing today? You know, and I say, you know, if you're not inspiring, if you're not, if you don't stay positive, you won't last. You know, if you look at all the little things that are not going right, you will not last. And it, it allows me to work with my siblings because again, once you lose a family member, um, it really does create like that gap and you kind of mm. feel like what what do we do now and we also actually had another um death in the family 2020 we lost our, our younger brother mm. uh, i always say wherever i go i'm taking him with me um uh, so wherever you are musa george conte your sister is still standing for you mm. um and he didn't get to reach his potential but i i also try to pour into the young boys on his behalf so i'm like i said that library is going to be in his name i don't even know where the library is i just know that he's going to have a library and so that's the piece and i tell people People don't look at your tragedy as the end. Look at it as somehow the beginning of something and a way that you're going to give back. So <laughs> I said a lot. Oh, my gosh. You are blowing my mind. And for those listening in and watching, this is a definition of a empowered woman, a successful woman, a woman who just has allowed her her purpose to evolve and clarify and is now an unstoppable force that's what yes. i see in you adama you're an unstoppable force and when you because you're so creative that's it and you call it like i've got so much to play with you actually do because yeah. you know when you actually open your eyes up to see what is possible in the world it's unlimited you know it yeah. really is unlimited yeah. the only frustration is i can't do enough because i don't have enough hours in the day mm -hmm. but with money and support and resources oh my gosh you can blow them blow the world apart in what Absolutely. actually can be achieved and and yes. here i'm hearing what a woman you know in the opposite side of the world is able to do when she already has a day job you know you're mm. seriously inspirational i love a few things that you said there you know of, of of how people perceive things you know these people have value they have a voice they have honor they have respect but they don't feel it when mm. other people look on them as poor and right. you know, underprivileged and of lack and when you yes. when you live and breathe that you end up thinking well i am not good enough i am not a, I, i'm not a value i cannot yes. contribute which is just so wrong right and so you are actually the biggest blessing is that you're actually giving them a fresh mindset that oh my yes. goodness i can i can braid hair i can yes. create um yes. a business i can yes. um, have a sustainable future for my village and i love i love what you're you're doing there that you're actually showing them um their their worth is already there they just need to know it mm -hmm. and be able to accept um assistance and help and work with them i also love what you've done with the collaborative that you've brought in other people to team up mm -hmm. and because we none of us are our own solo entity you know it's not about mm -hmm. us it's the work mm -hmm. that we do and so uh, i think that is just so incredible and also the view that you're wanting them to have a sustainable future so that you can go off and replicate this model exactly. in other villages you don't want to just make one shine and other next door is in lack you want to be yes. able to say okay we're developing a model that works here we yes. can now leave you to sustain that and have us as an anchor you know yes. um so that you won't fail but we can also move on and to create more value around the world um, exactly absolutely incredible um story and and um yeah all honor to you and and what you've been able to achieve and what was it like when you actually went on that plane for the first time and so you grow up as a as as a, a child listening to your parents who love sierra leone you know that you've got this african sense in your soul in your being but you've hit it back you arrive there with such 
such excitement and I love the way you just fully embraced it. But it mm. must have felt so weird that, you know, physically you look like you could have been, you know, born, born there, belong there. And it yeah. must have just been such a, uh, a mind-blowing experience to suddenly um, almost like put the full, you know, you've talked a couple of times about becoming a dharma or being a dharma. It actually is finding your true self, sense of self. Yes. Which is a woman of the world now, right? So, right. Woman of the globe. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will never forget that experience. Um, I will say that it was something that I was anticipating because my sis, my two sisters, my elder sister and my younger sister had already traveled before me. So my sister, my elder sister, Fatsumata, she traveled um, 1999. She was the only one that was able to meet my grandmother, who I'm named after mm -hmm. alive. Um, and and I, at that time I was in the military, so I wasn't able to get the time off. Um, and then fast forward to August 2003, uh, my sister below me, Yebu Kante, she traveled. And so at the time when she traveled, again, it could not work out with my schedule. Um, and so um, there I was, you know, like, okay, I need to go. So um, I had planned maybe for like two months. Um, at the time I was still with AmeriCorps. So that's all my AmeriCorps team heard. It was a small group of us and they were so excited. I mean, they were like, okay, so what about this? And what about that? And, you know, my, my uh, supervisor would give me time to go and, you know, shop and, you know, just try to get things ready. So, you know, I was ready. Um, of course I had explained that um, I may be like a few days, <laughs> a few days before travel, uh, the flight, it was a special flight that I decided to take was on the news, um, the flight ahead. And they were like, you know, if you're traveling on this flight, please go and get your money because it's, you know, and my roommates are like, oh, my gosh, is this your flight? <laughs> so, you know, I'm like devastated, like looking at my boxes all packed few days leaving but anyway long story short is through prayer and lots of people saying you know you are going you know? it. um it and so it. i was sitting on that plane i couldn't believe it i was just thinking is this a dream you know but so i determined myself to make sure i take it all in so i took my journal because i wanted to write about the feeling of me being in the clouds because that was my first international trip so it was wow. a voyage and as i was there i'm like oh my gosh i'm going to the motherland you know lion king <laughs> you know yeah, everything returning that I home. Was Africa, i felt like this was it you know and so you know as we're going through and then we're finally you know we left in december so it was freezing cold here um so i'm you know bundled up but then by the time you know i went through brussels belgium that was a transfer flight you know waiting five hours there i'm still writing in my journal just thinking you know just thoughts you know like oh my god this is it you know and you know um so they had actually what was good is that i get they had heard about me through my sister traveling in august and i think you know there were some things that happened that was not as great as her trip so i they leave they were trying to really prepare for yeah. me which was a gift because when I landed, um, I got off the plane. Again, the heat just hit me like welcome. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and I I got a little emotional because I knew that you know my dad always used to say you know before you leave this earth you have to go home and I just felt like okay daddy I'm here you know I've, I've reached home oh. and it kind of was like one of those moments like oh man I wish he was here um to see his daughter here on the soil and so we're right walking through you know it's just I'm just taking it all in like okay mm -hmm. what to expect because you know I, I heard that you have to kind of you know take care of your belongings and things can move fast and but luckily they had someone inside with a big sign it says you know welcome Adama Conte at the time from USA and I'm like I, I think that's me because you know Adama's very common yes. and I'm like I think and then when they looked the guy said you so I said yes and he helped me with my thing to help me get the security and once I got the security you know there's a place at that time now the family can't come no one can come into the airport but at that time there was an area where you could see the fam. And all I see is, you know, the people screaming, you know, Yandama, because my grandmother, um, when you're an elder, they put Ya in front of you. So instead of Adama, you become Yandama. So they were like, Yandama. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a lot of them. Uh, and my mom is the eldest of 14. So at least six or seven of them were there. And they started clapping. 
like oh. it was like a graduation and I'm like, ah. <laughs> you know, oh, but it was a warm embrace. It was a warm feeling. They were crying. I was crying. And, you know, it was just kind of like, wow, our daughter, you know, as they, yeah. they, they don't say my niece, our daughter is here. And it was such a blessing, you know, because, you know, they, you know, each, I could, I remember the pictures and my mom, you know, showed me. And, you know, so it was just, I felt like, wow, this is really home. You know, and, you know, again, of course, I had that at that time, I was sweating out of my little sweatsuit that I brought from the U.S. And I was like, OK, water. <laughs> I need some water. And they brought, they brought yeah. some food, you know, because they, you know, wanted to make sure, you know, as soon as I come, I can have, they have fresh. Somebody gave me like a fresh fruit. And I mean, they were just so excited. They didn't know what to do. Yeah. So it, needless to say, it was one of the most memorable times of my of me yeah. just entering into Sierra Leone. And I mean, I would have definitely um, other memorable moments. Again, as I said, I visited each and every one of my grandparents and all of the grand, all of the people that relatives that were still in the village, you know, each of them would tell me stories. You know, I knew your grandmother. She was so sweet. She used to roast peanuts right here every morning. Um, your grand, and then, you know, your grandfather had a coffee tree. So it was like a tour of history. Yeah. And that was, I, I believe that that journey to my roots, it was truly a journey. And each person, I would say, they could not give me riches. They didn't have like, you know, gold to give me, you know, but they gave me what they could in, 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 in Sierra Leone and some parts of West Africa. As a guest arrives, uh, when you get like a chicken, because yeah. it's a really big deal, that means, you know, okay, this is a gift. So I had a lot of chickens. <laughs> <laughs> that were given and they were like, you know, give it to me as a gift. Um, one of my aunts, she roasted these fresh peanuts for me. Um, and just different people were just doing what they can to show how much yeah. appreciated that. And, and most of them was that for you to come all the way here to find yeah. us here, you know, we give honor to your parents. And yeah. when they set me and they gave each of them bless my head, yeah. Um, and they blessed me with the water and they said, you, you will do great in life, you know? So yeah. for me, it was like that in itself was a gift, you know, yeah. being able to do that. And so I vowed, I mean, at that time, Impact Ceiling was not born, but I knew I can't go back the same. I don't know yeah. what I'm going to do. I don't even have it all figured out, but I know that as I go back, my cause has become a yeah. cause for Sierra Leone. I have become officially a voice uh, for Sierra yeah. Leone. And I knew the needs, you know, you see the needs, you see that there's a lack of basic needs and the food and, you know, you know, clothing. And so when I came back immediately, I was, my friends were like, I took pictures of everything. I took yeah. pictures of the trees. I took pictures of the coconut. I took pictures of everything. And when I came back, that was my social media posts every day. I was telling the story and I yeah. was like, this is my grandmother who I'm named after. We're standing over a grave and praying over her. And we have been welcomed by her spirit um, into the soil. And, you know, and everyone, American, African, different nationality, they were amazed. And that's how I, I started this thing called Chronicles of the Diaspora Queen. And I said, you know, one of the things I need to do is I have to open my mouth and I need to tell the stories. And the people don't assume this is what it is. I'm going to let people know that this is when I went to the beach, we had, you know, we spent New Year's and we enjoyed ourselves. And, you know, so that was my introduction to social media, <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> on Facebook. That's all I did. I just put pictures and I told stories. Yeah. And it was a joy. Which is where the where other people can then join that journey and feel they relate, you know, because yeah. that's right. You had the the heat, but you also had the the smell and the right. environment and the sounds and you've yeah. seriously been music. Sucked. Lots of music been every music day. And you've been seriously sucked into the bosom of Sierra Leone, like yeah. by all your relatives and the love of that. And then to be able to have impact, it's it's about yeah. you then being able to get clarity around what that means and what you can actually do. But it's also that's right about how you can bring other people, you know, yeah. if it interests them, it's if it sparks interest or joy to them that they can then be part of that journey right. so let's move on to then you're also writing in a woman's guide to business domination yes. tell me about the chapter that you are writing and why you think it's important to get that message out to um, people of the world yeah, so I love my chapter, um, creating a unique value proposition. Um, you know, at first I was like, okay, which angle do I want to take? So many angles. But, you know, I've always been told I am a unique person. And, you know, sometimes you can kind of like, okay, so 
that could be, you know, any way, but, you know, I always feel like deep down inside, there's been always something unique that has allowed me to go through the different journeys I've gone through. Um, and it is a blessing to know that, first of all, we're all created differently, but we all have a gift. Hmm. Everyone has a gift. I've seen some of the, the most troublesome people draw the most brilliant hmm. design. You know, and so I said, you know, everybody has a gift. You just have to discover that gift and hone in on it. And so, you know, for me, it's like that whole um, book chapter opened my eyes to one of my favorite sayings. And I use and reference the one of my favorite uh, movies, Lion King. Um, remember who you are. If you yes. don't know who you are, you don't know what's in you. You no one else would know what is in you. No one will appreciate your value. You we are all valuable no matter who you are in the spectrum, uh, disability or non-disability, there's something valuable that is put in it, in each of us. And one of my favorite saying is, um, greater is coming, greatness is in me. And that's something that I always try to pour on, I put on posters um, when I'm working with the children is that, you know, there's, there's power in words. If you say it enough, you will feel it and you will know, mm. I am valuable. I am valuable. Mm. In this whole big world, me, I can contribute and give something back. Even if I'm in Sierra Leone, I can yeah. do something and add value to the world. Whether it be in my village, in the city, inside of the president's home, I can be a value because mm -hmm. my mind says so. And if my mind is determined, that will come to light. And so I always love that part in the movie where he's trying to pour into Simba. That you know, you know, you you have to remember that you are a king. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Do you know yeah. who you are? You are the king of the jungle. You know, stop running. Don't run away, but embrace who you are. Nurture yeah. it. Allow it to grow. Allow it to become you. And that's something that I really I put myself because again, I grew up as a very, I would say, introvert. Um, super smart, but you know, would not. I mean, would be the farthest from this environment, you know, I would be in the back. I, I would always be helping, but not to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. I was insecure. I was shy. I didn't feel like I really had much to say. So I wasn't going to talk. And I believe God just, he just threw me into situations where I had no choice. You mm -hmm. know, um, in college, I had to take a public health course and I had tried to escape it for the longest time, but it was a required course and I couldn't get away from it. And, you know, I believe that, you know, everybody poison, everybody comes to your life and poison different things. But I remember that teacher because I feel like felt that he saw that you think you're just going to get out of this and just kind of, you know, get your C and just be happy. And he pulled it out. You know, he said, pull, that's why pull out the I will in your life. There's something that you can relate to that will allow you to be successful. And mm -hmm. I learned the value of embracing my voice, that my voice mm -hmm. has power. My voice matters, you know, whether or not I am at the forefront or the back, what I have to say matters. And I have to be able to speak not for myself, but because there's someone else that needs to hear my voice. Exactly. And so if I stay silent, who may not benefit from that? Who's mm -hmm. going to benefit from that? And so just that whole unique value has just taught me that we all have to have that um, confidence builder. And for me, I, I think social media, you know, you can use social media for your good, for power. You don't have to always mm -hmm. use social media to, you know, go downhill. Um, as you can see, it has a lot of influence. Um, I remember that, um, you know, I had some dark periods around 2019 and I was just going through some change. I had lost my job, but I had started, you know, this whole, I went on to LinkedIn because I was so encouraged by different people. You need a LinkedIn account. And I said, oh, I don't do LinkedIn. I just do Facebook. And, you know, like, okay, you need to grow. You, you can't start. <laughs> So you need, you know, some, I had someone tell me something is in you. And I said, no, no, something is in you and you need to pull it out. Cause what mm -hmm. I see is not just this person. I see you going here. So when mm -hmm. someone says that, you know, you start thinking, oh, wow, gosh, maybe, there's more. Mm -hmm. maybe there's more to what I'm doing and believe it or not, I just, as you say, take it step by step. You know, I just started like, you know, sprucing up my appearance and just feeling like I feel good. You know, I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to be valuable. I have to look valuable. 
I had to feel mm-hmm. valuable. And I said, okay, I need to learn to love my voice. I need to be able to embrace and say something. And so I said, okay, I can motivate people. I can use a quote, you know? So I just started, you know, taking a quote and just doing these happy new months every, mm-hmm. um, every month. And I did it with a smile. And it just, a lot of people started connecting and say, you know, I love this inspiration. You made my day. And mm-hmm. that's not money, but to me, it was a value to me because I felt, oh, wow, I didn't know I had that influence. You know, you know, it said, pull out the eye will in your life. You don't know what is inside of you until you tap mm-hmm. into it. And I said, wow, I'm designed for this. I'm designed to inspire people, mm-hmm. you know? And so I got over that fear and I learned to listen to other people and get comfortable in my own space, my own skin. And I mm-hmm. learned that there is a beauty inside of me that is so that is so strong and so powerful. I must not be silent. Mm. And so, and that opened the door. I had so many people that I didn't even know at the time they were my mentors. They just said, I, I like what I see and I, I would suggest you do this. And mm. I just soaked it up as a sponge. And then from then it just led on to, you know, me connecting it, connecting the dots to what mm. I was going to Sierra Leone. And so this, this chapter, I just feel like it just brought me back to when, I, I thought I was at a low point, but I was really at my highest because mm-hmm. something was happening. Something was churning. And I believe that was when I fully developed into an empowered woman. I learned that there was value in words. I had to speak to my mind every day like mm-hmm. you are a powerful force. And as I began to say that in videos, you know, people were like, I really love to watch you. And so I just tell people, discover things about yourself every day. Don't just, Mm -hmm. this is not it. It's Mm -hmm. never it. It's always a room for improvement, um, whether it be just learning from different people, um, pouring into each other, but also, you know, being a mentor. And then that opened the door to me being connected to an orphanage. And then that's when I became their voice. And that, Mm -hmm. I believe, was another training ground, another level of Mm -hmm. just speaking, of using those design skills and always trying to make posters. And I did go to school for public health. I don't even know if I mentioned that. So I have a passion for health education. And mm-hmm. I decided, you know what, I'm going to, you know, to meet the need of not those have those language barriers and the illiteracy. I'm going to turn, um, make health posters, you know, and empowerment posters. And I made one, especially for the young girls. I am bold, brilliant and brave. Hmm. And I and I made and laminated, and that was part of their empowerment gifts because I wanted them to see that. Oh, they, and they had their name, and I am empowered to inspire was my tag because we're empowered to do something, and that was my tagline on everything, and that became my favorite thing to do. Sometimes I would randomly send people messages. You are very inspirational. You are a powerful person, and I'm like I tell people, don't always expect anything back. Sometimes just send a random act of kindness. And mm-hmm. through that, I was led and I was chosen to become a global goodwill ambassador. Mm-hmm. And that opened the door to me learning about how to really bring in the sustainable development goals in every single thing you do. If it can't be sustainable, you know, mm-hmm. it's good to, you know, donate water. But wouldn't it be great to help them to learn how to, you know, pull water from a well and just yeah. you know, make water so they have it tomorrow. It's good to donate food, but wouldn't it be good to help them with a rice farm so that mm-hmm. they can be able to grow rice and grow fruits and vegetables and, you know, learn. And if they can't read, you know, you know, pour back into them, do a bit, um, bit by bit, but come to them where they are. So, mm-hmm. um, so that in a nutshell, the, the unique value book uh, chapter, it just really helped me as I was mm-hmm. writing it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, everyone was created for something good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you, Adama, and those uh, listening into this conversation, I've already read the chapter because it's already just at the publisher as we speak. And I tell you what, it's just powerful. It is a message that you need to hear. Every single chapter in this book is just so powerful. Yes. Uh, but what I, I love is just that 
just that acknowledgement that, you know, that's right, you are powerful, that you, you know, you don't want to be the, the world's best kept secret, right? And you and this is a master class really on on how important it is not to play small. You know, we yeah. play small, you become the shy child, you hide, yeah. you you don't speak up your voice, you don't apply for things because you think it'll make you feel more comfortable or you think right. you don't have something Stay to offer or you actually think other people will think you you think you're too too great for yourself or or have an issue with that. I know I grew up with one grandma who kept saying, never have pride, never, never be proud, um, be proud. Yeah. It will be the death of you, you know, things oh, like wow. that. And it's like such a blanket statement that makes mm -hmm. you fear the mm -hmm. empowerment. Whereas actually in none of our conversation today has it been about you then becoming selfish. It yeah. means that you are totally fulfilled and able to do yeah. so much good, right? So it's about believing in your worth, finding yeah. that unique value, which you yeah. are going to love buying this book and reading yes. uh, this chapter because it's going to give you a real awakening yes. of, you know, uh, the, the, the journey that is to become. And then when you have got that sense of mm -hmm. true self-actualization or belief or power that I am here for a purpose mm -hmm. and I have value and I have a voice and I can make a difference and an impact. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do that to everybody in the world, but for where mm -hmm. I'm positioning, I'm going to go all guns blazing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, your yes. world changes. And, and it's a ripple effect around yes. everybody that you touch. And it is seriously a beautiful thing. And I love yeah. that that you're giving to the girls in Sierra Leone, you know, just to be bold and to be beautiful and to be brave. And I probably another B word that I missed there, uh, but that's exactly what they need to do. And that's what yes. we all need to do, to actually believe that we were born for a purpose. And yes. it's actually disrespectful to to God or whoever you believe in yeah. to actually say, I'm not going to honour that. If you're exactly. born on the planet, then be the best version of you. And uh, and I think today's conversation, oh, my goodness, we're nearly at the hour. It's just been <laughs> so enjoyable. I can talk all day with you. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's been an example of just becoming who yeah. you are, everyone mm -hmm journey of becoming my biography is becoming annie uh yes. you are definitely becoming or have become a dharma and yes. it is that message of we are all becoming our best self yes and, uh, and in that journey i think today's conversation has deeply shown that all those stepping stones as long as you're leaning into that empowered future leaning into that version of you that you were born to be that you're still fine tuning and becoming yes. i tell you what it's it's amazing and the planet will be blessed yes. when more people are focusing on who they can be to give and mm -hmm. add value uh, mm -hmm. and to take people on that journey than to those who just sit back and, and just wait or criticise or, or hide in the shadows. So thank you so much for being on my mm -hmm. program today. For those of you who want to reach out, which I know you will, to Dr. <laughs> Adama Kalake, definitely go and visit her website, which is Impact. Sierra Leone.org. You will find the works, the projects she's doing. You'll find ways that you can donate. You can be part of her incredible works. She's a facilitator. She's a vessel in making things happen to change people's lives. You can do that from anywhere in the world. So definitely reach out to Impact Sierra Leone.org. Um, I'm sure Adama will personally welcome you in and, and respond. <laughs> You know, if you just go and say, can I do something? Can I do anything? Can I add value somehow? I am going to write a letter. Find a way for you to add value. And, uh, yeah, it's been an honour to interview you today. And, um, yeah, thank you for being the blessing to the world that you are. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, Annie.